So, understanding this Hebrew Roots Messianic movement can actually be a huge challenge. On the one hand, you got those with their various church backgrounds who have been taught from the pulpit all their life that all those Jewish things, they've been done away with. But on the other hand, you got both Jew and Gentile who are coming together and embracing the Hebrew Roots Messianic movement of the Christian faith. So, are there any solid scriptures that can definitively answer this question and guide us in the right direction in being able to rightly divide the word? In this video, I have seven key Hebrew Roots Messianic Movement scriptures that will help unravel this mystery and guide us in a clearer understanding coming up right now. What's up tribe? Sean here with Hebrew Roots Adventures bringing you biblical tips and scriptural tools to help motivate you and strengthen your walk in our Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach. And on this channel we do some scripture deep dives. We also do biblical presentations for the everyday believer just like this one. So if you're new here consider subscribing and also check out the show notes below where we're going to have biblical tips scriptural tools and helpful links that will encourage you and motivate you to get in the word and dig deeper. So if you're ready to go, let's dive in. Number one, John 14, starting with uh, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So love. Love is the driving force. If you love me, you keep my commandments. That is what drives us to keep the commandments. Not because we want to have a work-based mentality for salvation. Okay, that's not the issue here. We are not earning our way into heaven. We are doing good deeds. We are keeping his commandments because we love him. That's where it originates from. That's the basis of it. That's the fruit of love. The Messiah said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So it is the fruit, not the root. Are you following me so far? Why? Because Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift from God, or it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we are not working for our, our salvation but we keep the commandments because Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep the commandments. But did you notice in verse 24, it says, he who does not love me does not keep my commandments, right? He who does not love me does not keep my words and the words which you hear are not mine, but the father who sent me. Wow, that should ring off some bells right now for those who are thinking about the doctrine of Christ may be a different doctrine because he just said the words which you hear are not mine, but the father who sent me. So, so when you're talking about the doctrine of Christ, I want you to hear something. There's some camps that think the doctrine of Christ is a separate doctrine than one that was given on Mount Sinai. But listen to what Jesus says in John 7, 16, he says, and Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but him who sent me. You see right there, he says, my doctrine is not mine, but him or his who sent me. And that's gonna lead right into the next powerful key messianic Hebrew scripture, which is 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Wow, 1 Corinthians 11 one hits the nail on the head. Paul tells us to imitate him as he imitates Christ. Well, how did Paul worship? What did he eat? What did he celebrate? Uh, what did he practice as far as what was clean and unclean? Paul tells us to imitate him. 
but not just to imitate him, imitate him as he imitates Christ. So we know that Jesus, Yeshua, was 100% Torah observant, meaning that all the things in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all those commandments, Jesus adhered to 100%. Why? Because if he did not, he would be disqualified as the Messiah. First John tells us that sin is lawlessness. Check out the show notes below. It's going to be in there as well. That's another bonus scripture. But listen, Jesus kept the Torah 100%. Paul tells us to keep the Torah. Well, Paul tells us to imitate him as he imitates Christ. Paul was actually accused in Acts of teaching men everywhere at, against the Torah and against the holy place, meaning the temple. And Paul denied it. Paul said, that's not true. It, they can't even prove that kind of stuff against me. Let them try. They took a Nazarite vow to prove it wasn't true. But that's another video that we'll do, but not on this one. So a little teaser there. Jesus says in Matthew 10, verse 24, it says, a disciple is not above his teacher. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. Like his master. Are you getting that? Let that sit in. That is Matthew 10, 24. That'll be in the show notes below. So if you combine that with 1 Corinthians 11, imitate me as I imitate Christ, coupled with that we as disciples should be like our teacher, slaves should be like their master. You know, if you combine those things, we get the full picture, wouldn't you agree? Now from here, let's go into our third key Messianic Hebrew root scripture, and that is in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. Wow, right there in the beginning, the first five books, it tells us not to add or take away from what he's commanding us. And so often today we see people saying, this is done away with, and this is done away with, and we don't celebrate that anymore, but we do celebrate this now. And we don't keep the Sabbath on Saturday, but now we're gonna add to it and keep it on Sunday. So there's so many different, uh, uh, different commandments that have been changed, but we see in Deuteronomy, it says don't add to it or take away from it. Now get this, hold on a second. I wanna show you this. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22 let's go to verse 18 and it says for I, for it says for i testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book if anyone adds to these things god will add to him the plagues that are written in this book and if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy god shall take away his part from the book of life from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. You hear that? We have a witness in the Old Testament. We have a witness in the New Testament. We have two witnesses telling us the exact same thing. Don't add and don't take away from the commandments of God. Are you hearing me? Do you hear what I'm saying? Is this sinking in? We are stuck. So Revelation 22 that mirrors Deuteronomy 12, both in harmony, both in agreement, not to add, not to take away from what the Word of God is saying. And the reason, the, the biblical principle behind Revelation 22 mirroring Deuteronomy 12 is found in Isaiah. Isaiah 46.10, let me read it to you. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. 
So the biblical principle is that God told us in Deuteronomy that we are not to add or take away, but it's also declared in the end not to add or take away. So they're both in agreement. We have a scripture that says he's gonna do exactly that. What are some of the things you can think of that in this faith of ours, in the Christian faith, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what are some of the things that you can think of that have been added to our faith? Or what are some of the things that have been taken away? What feasts, what holidays, what celebrations, what commandments? What are some of the things that we didn't used to do, but now we are doing? Leave your comments in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. And then tell me what your thoughts are on that, okay? All right, so in the New Testament, I'll leave this other scripture with you before we go on to the next key Messianic Hebrew root scripture. Uh, this next scripture uh, is in Matthew 5. And you can find it in verse 16, I believe. Uh, Matthew 5. And you can find it in verse 17. Where it says, I have not come to do away with the law, but I have come to fulfill. Let me read that for you. It says, do not think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, until heaven and earth passes away, not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So meditate on that. And while you're doing so, let's go right ahead into our next powerful key messianic Hebrew scripture number four. He who says he abides in him ought to himself walk just as he walked. First John is telling us that we as believers who abide in Christ ought to walk just like Jesus walked. So let's open up the curtains, let the light shine in, and let's understand what we're talking about. Ought to walk like he walked. Ought to, need to, behoove to, whatever your definition says, but when it says ought to walk like he walked, we're not talking about traveling with the swag. We're not talking about walking with a fake limp. We're not trying to say, strive your steps to be cool. No, we're talking about ought to walk. We're thinking the Hebrew mindset of halakha. And halakha means, I'll have to tell you on the next video.